Hello. Well, <clears throat> today I'm continuing on with uh, Friday the 13th uh, movies with part three uh, in 3D. Um, obviously, this film was uh, done in 3D, and uh, it's because of the popularity of this film with you know 3D being implemented. That 3D sort of came back, in a way, uh, particularly with horror films. Um, Jaws 3D uh, had uh, came out like a year later. There's also the Amity Horror 3D. So, yeah, this uh, this movie, you know, is pretty popular amongst fans because of that, though without the 3D glasses and um, while this one doesn't have uh, any glasses particular, like you have to have a 3D TV as well as a 3D Blu-ray player, if you don't have any of that, then this will never uh, really work for you in terms of 3D, but for me, I'm fine without it because um, I've noticed... Uh, Sometimes I'm able to see 3D stuff, and sometimes I'm not. Sort of like half and half. Half the time I see it, half the time I don't. So it would be pretty useless if I really tried to watch this in 3D, because half the stuff would come out at me. Um, on the 2009 and blue, uh, DVD and Blu-ray, as well as the original box tin set that I've shown. Um, they do come with 3D glasses, but the 3D is red and blue, and not at all like the sort of anamorphic 3D stuff that they film the movie with. And so, the, which also doesn't help with the 3D aspect, I find. Um, but yeah, this film. Uh, Aside from the 3D aspect, this is uh, very notable, obviously, for it is the first time Jason gets his hockey mask. Um, let's just look at the alternate cover here. Poster. There you go. He's uh, in purple. And has the hockey mask, and it seems like this is where the inspiration came from with the NES video game. This poster, uh, there's the alternate back, and there's the back here. So there's a bit of a difference. Um, so you know, this uh, film is quite notable in certain aspects regarding Jason's hockey mask as well as it helping uh, make the 3D uh, aspect with movies popular again. And, uh, yeah, and this is also the first one in 2 by 3 aspect ratio for a widescreen. The others have been 1.85, so that, I believe, was done due to the 3D, uh, not because they wanted to go in that direction, because it would be, you know, many years until another film in this franchise would actually have, uh, you know, that uh, aspect ratio, so, you know, until then, this was the first and, for a while, only movie that was like that. Um, and some people say that because of the 3D, without the lack of glasses and stuff, the movie isn't as great as it probably should be or could be. Um, and um, Larry, Larry Zerner, who, um, in one of these uh, documentaries, like the uh, I believe Fresh Cuts 3D Terror, you know, he's talking about the movie and he's like, you know, a lot of the stuff, like with the acting, 
was sort of sacrificed due to the uh, uh, complications of like with trying to make sure the uh, 3D was really good, making sure that the 3D aspect of the film was working, so things were th thrown at the camera or launched at the camera via like like a, a cable and something was coming towards the camera. Stuff like that was deemed more important many times in, say, the acting. And the acting in this film isn't the greatest. Um, up until now, uh, you know, there have been overall pretty decent performances by everybody. You know, no award-worthy, you know, performances, per se, but performances that were very good, you know, and often... In terms of like horror films, especially like this, and how many people kind of at times dismiss dismiss uh, slasher films due to some of the hokey performances, you know, th this film sort of helps, I guess, prove that right at times. But even with that, I think it has a charm of its own. Um, you know, there's a uh, Chris who uh, we follow, who's the heroine. And like the last film, this film sort of picks up where the last one left off, though the jump scare of uh, part two is now the way it's edited and cut seems to be sort of like uh, uh, sort of say like uh, the way this film begins didn't happen because you know at the end of the f second film you know there's another jump scare you know that Jason jumps through the window of the cabin that Paul and Ginny get to and you know, Jason attacks her and then Paul is missing um, and I mentioned some stuff about how you know what happened that in certain parts of the film like how did this happen and how some things are explained and others people kind of create theories as to how they kind of uh, work. Uh, this film seems to have some problems, I guess, too. Is the jump scare at the end uh, of part two uh, is said to be real. It is not at all like a dream. Um, and the implication which for that film was cut with Mrs. Voorhees uh, severed head opening up and smiling was too fake and you know they just cut it and ended the film uh, because of it and so the implication of what happened to Paul is just sort of a mystery nobody knows like the implications not there that he's dead and some, uh, you know, suggest that perhaps uh, Jason and Paul were sort of, I guess, in cahoots, I guess, but uh, he didn't want Jenny dead, so he attacks him at the end. But, you know, that's part two, and I should have mentioned that last time, but I, it didn't really occur to me until a little later, but, you know, I was always already satisfied with how that video turned out overall. So with this film, opening the way it does with Jason, because he got hit in the, you know, the shoulder with a machete, takes it out and then sort of goes away. Um, people sort of speculate that he did kill Paul and attack Jenny, and then he came back and passed out, then woke up and got shitty out of his shoulder and then the third film begins and it begins with you know seeing Mrs. Voorhees' head and then the titles popping out at you with uh, very 80s sort of like music like almost like, like a disco of sorts even though they were like you know disco died like after the 70s but it was sort of still popular in the 80s a bit, so I guess this was sort of like the last remnants of that era in terms of music, 
and uh, yeah, after you know, <clears throat> after that, you then see uh, you know a store and there's clothes uh, not on the li on lines that then Jason takes them to you know have some new clothes because you know they has been injured and also. It just might be good for him to just get just get out of the overalls and flannel. And so he wears, you know, this button button down shirt, and uh, yeah. And the makeup has also uh, changed. Of course, you can't see the makeup over the mask, but you know he. The makeup has changed, which seems to be a thing with these films. Continuity-wise, with the uh, makeup changes with each movie because each movie has a different, you know, uh, makeup artist. Um, and so Jason does this thing and kills people at this store, and uh, all the while uh, this woman was, was listening uh, and watching TV about the what happened. The previous night, because one thing about Friday the Thirteenth, two through four, they all take place within days of each other. So you know, in a way, the title Friday the Thirteenth doesn't totally make a whole lot of sense outside of continuing this story with Jason. You know, part two, sure, all the bulk of the killings take place, sure, like on Friday the Thirteenth. A couple, you know, days leading up to it, sure. Um, but, you know, with the exception of the, like the beginning of the film, you know, it's pretty much Saturday, and then, yeah. So after these murders, we then see Chris Higgins and her friends all going to cabin that her family has and uh, just like sort of like for the weekend to enjoy uh, just enjoy the time alone and uh, have a good time uh, Larry Zerner uh, plays Shelley and I mentioned before you know, he's kind of like a jokester and trying to be like an actor and he has like this box that he keeps a whole bunch of like stuff and like basically like hockey mask and other things uh, and as the movie goes on you know we uh, obviously see some uh, new characters like uh, Ali a biker and uh, two of his like friends like part of like a biker gang and they uh, go to the uh, cabin because, well, uh, Shelly ran over their bikes after, you know, uh, he accidentally ran into them and the guy, and Ollie just broke the windows and <laughs> the car. Uh, when they go to, uh, go to town to get some, uh, like, a, Just uh, food. Uh, you know, after yeah, they they get food after he's just sort of like people just don't like Shelly after a while because he sort of like pulling pranks and like pretends to be dead and have like prop knives and stuff in him and fake blood and this sort of becomes something. Kind of important later on uh, when um, Shelley ultimately bites it uh, because of this uh, people they don't think he's actually dead uh, the person who finds him doesn't believe he's dead until you know he stops breathing and then they push it like try to nudge him and have him stop like messing around and then he falls and he's like that's clear he's actually dead 
a spoiler alert for Shelley, but you know, with what's what he's done, you know, it's not a complete surprise. But that that's his outcome. And uh, you know, as the as film as the film just goes on, you know, you see people get killed, and you also see a bit of uh, of Chris's backstory regarding like oh, with Jason and. That also makes people wonder what, how, did, when did this happen chronologically? I can must have happened part two, uh, because the way she's talking about it, it happened years ago. So, okay, even I guess uh, before the events of part one and two, uh, somewhere between the very beginning of part one and then the events of part one is when this happened and it's you know, like it's sort of confusing and people have to try and figure out what exactly happened like it's just interesting to how you know there's in a way there's sort of a continuity going on here with the story with Jason and everything. But then there's also some inconsistencies or things that don't totally line up. Well, in the movies we've already seen when you really look at them. Especially, you know, later on down the line when you have so many movies that are sort of in constant continuity, but then there's some moments that sort of jut out. And, uh... You know, this is these are this is one that's quite talked about. Um, for me, I don't know. That's just like I've heard people talk about it. I've read stuff online. I've heard, watched some videos of what people think, and it's very interesting. Definitely of a conversation that uh, people have. People have with each other um, certain theories. People develop and. You know, some horror films just don't uh, have the greatest continuity. Um, you know, this is no exception. Um, but sometimes, you know, you can sort of fill in the gaps yourself. Like, like what I mentioned uh, last time with Part 2, of how Jason was still alive could be that he didn't drown and washed up to shore and then just lived in the woods uh, until we see him in part two um, and yeah you can then go from there how, how he found Alice and from here how uh, he found uh, or he came across uh, Chris when she just ran from home and was just really upset and with her parents and just was gonna just sort of make them pay in a way of like regretting what they did so like some getting into some sort of fight and then mother slaps her and so she just runs off makes them want to feel terrible and then by morning she'd come back um but it's a really interesting scene and makes people really question what's going on, when, when did this happen, take place, trying to pinpoint it. Um, yeah. And part of Chris's reason to go back to this place is because she wants to try and prove something to herself, I guess. Like, you know, Mike, this is not going to just sort of like beat her. She's not going to be completely you know, she's not going to just let what happened to her get the best of her, and she can go back to this place and enjoy it. Um, of course, uh, you know, boyfriend Rick is in this film, who my last time did uh, accidentally call Paul in that one moment, when I forgot his name for a brief moment until... You know, uh, I corrected it, but, yeah, uh, you know, Rick's her boyfriend, you know, helping out and everything, and 
kind of gets a bit frustrated, but, you know, he's, like, trying to, uh, trying to be with her and understand what's going on, and, because he doesn't seem to really know what happened, nor does a whole lot of people there don't really know exactly what went on, and so she finally tells Rick and basically us the audience what happened, um, <clears throat> but again, you know, people say how that doesn't totally ma make sense continuity-wise, especially since he's wearing the exact same clothes and that he wears in this film that he, you know, pretty, pretty much like just got up at the beginning of the movie, like he changed out of his overalls and is now wearing something new. Uh, so, there is that, um, you know, that just sort of, I guess, adds to the confusion, but I guess since, you know, they didn't have really overalls and that flannel shirt that wasn't already, like, damaged and bloody from picking up after where part two ended, and they didn't plan for him to wear that anymore, as well as giving him a new, new mask. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so we find out that story, and then also, of course, Jason's killing all their friends. Uh, you know, uh, and also, Ollie and the bikers siphon gas out of their van, sort of as revenge of Shelley running over their motorcycles. Um, you know, that was really good of you. And, uh, and take them to the barn, but then Jason was up in there and killed them. The first two, and yeah. Like all these friends, and you know, one by one, People get killed. Uh, Shelley does and comes back and uh, uh, yeah, Jason comes back and with a harpoon gun shoots one of them in the, through the eye with it, which is quite. It's quite interesting, you know, it's like the, only, the closest you'll ever get to see Jason with a gun is with uh, using that harpoon gun. Because uh, he doesn't use guns, he uses, like, knives, like machetes, uh, axes, and other things, and even his own hands. So, he, uh, you know, doesn't really use firearms at all, and this is like the, well, the closest he comes to it in uh, you know the hockey mask uh, has been something like who who thought of giving Jason a hockey mask and many people sort of take credit of course uh, and the special features uh, so you know whoever who, who's ever hockey mask it was I guess you know that could be the thing like you know Oh, like, oh, I've got a hockey mask in my car, or so-and-so's got a hockey mask, you know. It's, uh, it's one of those things that, I guess, it doesn't really matter who who did it. The end result is, uh, it's very, uh, it was very fitting, because then Jason found his look. Uh, Jason, uh, really became iconic with that, um. So, you know, that's really cool. Third film gets his iconic look, and, uh, yeah, and, he's, and he kills as many people as he can, of course. Uh, yeah, this is just, this is an interesting film. There are good, mo good moments in it, and some that could have been worked on, but I think for what it is, it's quite good. Of course, it would have been nice if they did try to, you know, 
work with the actors and actresses better so that some of the performances would be uh, more believable and better. Um, of course, Jason, you know, grunts and groans in pain anytime he's hit or stabbed. Um, and one thing that happens at the end of the film, you know, uh, spoilers, once pretty much all of her, Chris's friends are dead. Also, Rick, that gets his head crushed and I pop out. Um, he's in thrown through the window and goes to the barn. Uh, everything leads out to the barn and uh, in the midst of all that turns out uh, Ali isn't dead at all and uh, goes to try and kill Jason but then Jason cuts off his hand and finally kills him. And then Chris hits Jason in the head with the axe, and then, you know, she, that doesn't really uh, kill him. But neither did, you know, earlier uh, hanging Jason, you know. And it's also in that moment before Ali and was real to be alive that, you know, he lifts his mask up and uh, they look at each other and, he knows who she is, she knows who he is, and so that really definitely, you know, leaves no doubt that what she said happened earlier did happen. It wasn't something that, you know, being out there alone just sort of like had a nightmare, and yeah, it's just, it also makes you wonder what Jason was doing or was going to do with her, which, uh, yeah. And anyway, you know, he's trying to kill her, gets a back on the head, then he falls down. And, uh, then, then it's morning, and she's out in a canoe, reminiscent of the first film. Oh, Jason's not dead, and he's, like, like in the house, and he runs out to her and she's trying to get away and when she turns back he's gone then she's sort of confused and then Mrs. Voorhees her body and like skeletal body and the sweater comes up and grabs Chris and pulls her under the water like Jason to Alice in the first film sort of like echoing various moments uh, of earlier film uh, earlier the earlier films. Uh, so, yeah, that's a... Uh, it, it's quite interesting to see how it adds some new uh, elements to Jason that, you know, we hadn't seen yet, but then also some of this is sort of dropped in later installments, uh, which I can understand and get why uh, some of them were dropped and just overall ignored because it's like, well, does that totally fit continuity? I mean, the continuity wasn't in perfect condition in, by some later st installments, but some things may not necessarily be needed to, you know, uh, be acknowledged anymore. So. I can understand how in uh, some cases this certain elements of this were kind of just overlooked and not really acknowledged ever again. Um, but, you know, this is a f very fun film to watch. You know, whether it is your favorite installment or not, it, it's fun to watch. Um, I know for a while I wasn't totally a huge fan of it. It wasn't when I ignored, but I just was like, you know, I could do without watching. And I think part of that was due to the performances, to be honest. But upon subsequent uh, uh, viewings of this, uh, I've sort of lightened up on the on the whole bad acting, sort of cheesy at times, and. Um, 
I think that kind of helps with the film, honestly. Gives it a sort of charm that uh, some of the other installments uh, don't necessarily have. Be that for better or worse, that's your own. I guess that's up to everybody's, uh, <clears throat> their own, uh, the, their own opinion, whether they really love this movie or not. Um, I enjoy it. I think it's really good. It's cool to see how Jason gets his hockey mask. And, um, yeah, the way everything ends, you know, Chris is taken away in a police car and, uh, Jason is left there, seemingly dead. Though, of course, since this isn't the last movie, you know, we know that's not the case. But perhaps the next movie will be the final movie. I mean, after all, part four is called The Final Chapter, so we shall see if that really does bring things to a close, or at least could have brought things to a close. Um, yeah. Anyway, I will uh, definitely make that uh, video next time, and I will. And until then, uh, hope you all will take care. Have a great day. Have a great weekend and a great week. See you all next time.